been getting questions about voltage dividers of all things and I thought that would make a pretty good uh, idea for a video. So let me tell you a little bit about voltage dividers. They show up everywhere, although they don't necessarily always look like voltage dividers. Anytime you're doing an electronic circuit, there's a pretty good chance there's a voltage divider in there somewhere. If you're using op amps and you're trying to run an op amp off a battery, chances are there's a voltage divider. If you're running a Wheatstone bridge, uh, using a Wheatstone bridge to uh, condition the output of strain gauges, that's actually two voltage dividers. Low pass and high pass filters also look like voltage dividers with a little bit of a twist. So the thing those all have in common is they all have the same sort of topology. They all look about the same. So let's start with a voltage divider. I'm going to start by drawing the circuit diagram and then telling you how it works. Now I'm not an electrical engineer by training. I'm actually an aerospace engineer. So I'm having to learn this fairly late in life. Don't feel bad if you're having trouble with this too. I know I did. So let's go. We'll start with a voltage source and right now let's start with something that looks like that. That's meant to be batteries, okay? Batteries make a constant voltage. Um, I suspect that has to do with uh, the plates in a battery, but I'm not really sure. So let's go over here like this and we'll make one resistor. And then that little dot there means that's a connection between two components. And let's make another resistor. Okay, and we'll call that R1 and R2. And this over here will be voltage out. And we'll call that voltage in, okay? So that's only got two components, three components, and a battery and two resistors. That's a voltage divider. That's what one of these things looks like. Now, what uh, this voltage out here means is if you were to, if you want to measure voltage out, you would take a voltmeter, and I've got a voltmeter right here. Take a voltmeter. This is a little cheap one I got off of Amazon. There's the voltmeter and these two little wires right here. These two little wires, when I say voltage out, I could actually put the two wires right there and I could measure voltage. Okay, I guess I should probably want to go this way. I guess I had it right. Right there, just like that. Okay, so that's what's going on here. Now, there's uh, basically only, uh, let's see, two rules you got to know to figure out what voltage out is. When we say analyzing a voltage divider, we're trying to figure out what's the output voltage, okay? The idea of a voltage divider is you have input voltage and you want the output voltage to be lower. Right? So let's say this is 12 volts just for, just for this example. All right? um, there's, there's two rules you need to know. The first is that when you draw a loop around a circuit like that, the sum of the voltage has to be zero. That's Kirchhoff's voltage law. So the sum of the voltage equals zero around a loop, okay? So let's do this. That's positive voltage, so we'll say V in minus R1 I minus R2 I equals zero, okay? Now I've just used another law in there. That's called Ohm's law. The voltage drop equals the resistance times the current. Current is I. So resistance is just that, resistance to flow of electrons. It actually decreases the force the, the, uh, acting on the electrons. And I, the current, that's just the number of electrons that flow, okay? So Kirchhoff's voltage law says that the sum of uh, volts around a loop, or sum of the voltages around a loop is zero. And Ohm's law says resistance, or sorry, V equals I, or voltage drop equals current times resistance. So we've just used both of those. Let's rearrange this a little bit. Let's say V in equals R1 plus R2 times I. And what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to solve for I. And the way I'm going to proceed with the solution is I'm going to find two different expressions that have I in them, solve for I, and then set the two expressions equal to each other, since I in one has to equal I in the other. And then I'm going to come up with an expression for voltage out in terms of voltage in and the resistors. So that's where we're headed. Okay, so here we go. There's that. And let me do it a little differently here. I equals R1 plus, ah, I keep messing this up. Now I got it right. Okay, I equals voltage in divided by R1 plus R2. So what? Well, let's, let's write that up here. The 
that's only half the puzzle. I need one more piece here. And because I've got a small board, I'm going to write, uh, erase this. I've got the important part over here. Well, I want to know what the output voltage is, right? So I want to know what the voltage drop is across that resistor. Now let's just use Ohm's law. V out equals R2I. Well, there's I again. Or I equals V out over R2. Okay, well, I've got another expression for I over here. Let's just set that equal to that, since I there is equal to I there. The reason I there equals I there, the reason the current is the same through the whole circuit as it is through that one resistor, there's no other place for the electrons to go. You know, if there was more circuit over here, then maybe some of the electrons would be diverted that way, but there's not. It's just one loop, so every electron that leaves the battery on that side and comes through has to go back uh, into the battery again. Okay. So let's say now that V out over R2 equals V in over R1 plus R2. Okay, well now we're getting somewhere. Notice we never did figure out I. We don't need to know what it is. And unless you really care, you can back calculate it. But unless you really care, there's no need to know it. Okay, so finally, V out equals R2 R1 plus R2 times Vn. And that's the, that's the expression we care about. That's the expression for uh, how a voltage divider works. If I know Vn and I know a couple of uh, resistances, I can tell you what V out is. Okay? So let me replace this with the expression we now know. There we got it. Let's put some numbers in here just for yucks, okay? Well, let's say this is 100 kilo ohms, and let's say this is 100 kilo ohms, okay? Well, I'll tell you right now, we're going to get 6 volts out. Half the voltage is going to be dissipated across that resistor, and the other half is going to be dissipated across that, because all that voltage has to be dissipated somewhere, okay? So, but let's, let's run the, these two numbers through that expression. Well, let's see, 100 kilo ohms over 100 kilo ohms plus 100 kilo ohms times 12 volts equals V out. Well, that sure looks to me like that's going to be 100 over 200. Last I checked, that was a half. So that's going to be 6 volts. So now, we know this works. We can start changing these voltages around to get whatever we want. If you want to divide the, the input voltage in half, make those two the same. If you want to cut it only by a third, say make this 100 and 200, or 100 and 200 kilo ohms, whichever. It's just the ratio that matters here. Okay? So this is a voltage divider. I'm going to do more videos in the future showing how a voltage divider works if maybe those aren't just resistors, maybe those are capacitors. Um, also, I'm going to show you how what happens if one of them is a resistor and one of them is a capacitor and how that acts as a filter.